engage. And you're right. Senator Van Drew is going to have a hearing on it in the Senate, and we're probably going to be there to testify and speak to a lot of these issues. And uh, we're hoping to count on you as a supporter in maintaining urban enterprise zones, since you represent two. Oh, of them. I <laughs> definitely am a supporter of the urban enterprise zones. A I few. Just want to change gears a little bit. A few weeks ago, the city of Elizabeth and the surrounding municipality lost power. Uh, where, where <laughs> for some reason, they want me to ask you this question. Uh, <laughs> Firehouses remained operational due to emergency generators. Where were you during the blackout? I was um, doing my civic responsibility and jury duty. I was here at the Union County Courthouse. Um, I, w I, I wasn't called. Um, I was so in the third on, group. You, mean you weren't called, you didn't get on a case. I wasn't called on a case. I was the third group that day. Um, and we were going to get called later on in the afternoon to go up to one of the um, judges' chambers, well, to the courtrooms, to figure out who was going to stay on, um, who is going to be called after they go through the questioning. Um, and so all the lights went out. And at first I thought it was just in the building. And then I, um, the sheriff officers informed us they had to move us to um, another floor. And that's when you saw that all the lights were out, out in the building. And then they informed us, you know, what was going on and asked us to remain there until they figured out if they were to call us back the next day or excuse us. And you were? We were excused, the whole group, so that we could leave. And um, what I was impressed most with Mayor that day was how quickly there were police officers, um, and I can't tell you right now if they were county or city, at every it was intersection. A combination. Yeah, it was a combination. So the thing is, what happens in, in, when something like that happens? I had never experienced something like that. And well, the, first thing happens, the first thing happens is I go to police headquarters mm -hmm. and we decide whether we're going to open the command center or not and declare an emergency. Uh, we did not open the command center that day as we did a couple of years ago when the blackout occurred with the whole grid. But we did not open the command center, but uh, we did have emergency communications. We went on generators immediately because we lost all our power as well in police headquarters and everywhere else. So the generators and what we did the first thing was to uh, the first instruction from from uh, my office and the coordinators were to send all the fire trucks out. Mm -hmm. And the fire trucks then started patrolling the streets and going up and down streets in different precincts in case a fire broke out. Because if they did, there would be no way to call. Uh, you could get through on the emergency, but because of all the other things, there may be a delay. So if the fire truck was out on the road, there was a good chance they could respond that much quicker instead okay. of sitting in the firehouse. Secondly, the police department where every available personnel were sent to major intersections. Mm -hmm. And then the Public Works Department was sent to Route 1 uh, to put barricades and trucks to block off all of the side streets going into Route 1 because all of the lights were out, which would have made travel and traffic and possibly a dangerous situation worse. And so they're the initial things we do. And thank God it, was, it didn't last long. It lasted about two hours or slightly under two hours when the power was restored. Well, I think those residents that were living it thought it would be it was forever those two hours. Oh, it is, and, and the key is not to open your refrigerator so you save the food. But uh, something, when one thing we, we really need to discuss uh, towards the end of this program is you've been recently appointed chairwoman of the Homeland Security and Preparedness Committee. And uh, first, who are the other legislators on the committee? And I'd like to talk with you about your priorities and, and your agenda because, you know, Elizabeth being the home of a port city and half of Newark Airport, the Homeland Security Preparedness Committee is an important committee for the city of Elizabeth, which you represent in the State Assembly. Um, the committee has five members, and um, the vice chair is Assemblyman Johnson, then you have Assemblyman Prieto, Assemblyman Versicelli, Assemblyman Schroeder, and Assemblyman Russo. And right now I'm doing all the briefings. I am, <laughs> I feel like I'm back in law school, I'm behind the first day. Um, I have met with the state um, director of Homeland Security, Charles McKenna, who gave me a wonderful overview. And um, I have already met in the state. Um, I need to still meet with the state police superintendent. I've already met with the sheriff, um, the prosecutor. I, I have a number of individuals still to meet with. And I'm not just meeting here in Union County. I'm also um, looking out to meet with individuals in Essex County, since we do have the port and the airport. Um, the committee, especially now with the blackout, <laughs> let me tell you, I, I, I really realize how important it is. Um, that day showed me that I'm not prepared. 
um, I thought I was. You know, I, I, you know, I have the flashlight, I have the batteries. Unfortunately, they weren't in the same, they weren't together where they should be. So the thing is, I would say the first priority is to help individuals understand how important it is to prepare. And prepare for all kinds of events, um, be it the blackout, um, what you should have ready as a family, what kind of um, decisions should have been made before, where you meet if you can't meet at your home. Um, the firemen, let me tell you, I was so pleased to see the firemen at my um, apartment building. They came to see if anybody was stuck in the elevator. And I was like, oh. You know, if somebody had been stuck, it would have been great that they were there. And so it was a wonderful thing that they were driving around to the big apartment buildings because we have a lot in Elizabeth. Um, also, I realized because of my neighbors with small children and, and seniors, they weren't prepared. Um, there was a lot of um, um, not miscommunication, no communication, I would say. They weren't sure what was going on and they weren't sure how to find out. So we have to make sure that individuals um, know where to get the information. Also, my concern is if it had been longer, um, what do we do with um, senior citizens that are home and individuals that are homebound? What's the plan? We have to make sure we, we have plans in place before there's an emergency. Only because, you know, when, the, when there's an emergency, that's not the time to think about what I should have done, could have done, or would have done. It's a time to act. So that's, that's like my number one. I really want to make sure. The second is a, um, a coordination of information. Um, between state, federal, county, municipalities, when something like that happens, or even to share information about a terrorist um, threat. You know, who has the jurisdiction? And um, I'm still learning all those um, policies and um, um, memorandums nuances. of understand sure. this and nuances and stuff like that. So it's like, okay, this is what we're going to do here and there. Um, and I think that we need to make sure that individuals report if they see something suspicious. So, I mean, I those would be the three. Make sure, you know, what uh, your surroundings. Like public service announcements or something. Make sure people get involved. Public service, yeah. New York does them all the time. And uh, you know, it's one of the ways Times Square was averted because... Somebody paid attention to what was happening around them. Yes, I thought that was, that's a wonderful yeah. example. And the thing is, we also have to do it in different languages because I think um, we have to make. Well, I think that we have to make sure that um, we get to all segments of our society. The um, social service reform that you're working on. Tell us more about that. Um, we have a um, constituent director in our office, and. Um, there are times that she'll come to me to discuss what she considers problem cases. And we had one recently that actually brought me to tears. Um, here is a woman who lost her job. So she had a, um, she had um, put in for unemployment um, benefits and she was appealing it because she was declined. And um, she receives money from her husband, um, child support, um, not a lot of money, and because of that, was knocked out of every other program. And she was, she was losing her home, and um, she was going to be homeless and with a child. And there was a whole discussion. There were social um, groups, agencies that got together to try to help her. But what happens when you, fall, when you don't fit in any of the pretty little boxes that we have um, Created so this this thing what what we're doing is on the social reform um, we're looking at what happens on the ground to people what programs don't work because I think we're all you know we all go to bed at night thinking we're doing a great job of taking care of the most vulnerable and because of what's going on in in, in today's economy we have a large number of individuals that are falling there we have to have a safety net that catches everyone not just a few. And so what we're doing is, what I think the governor should do is survey, you know, find out what's working, what's not working. Just like with the Urban Enterprise Zone, find out what's working. And guess what? You can fix things that are not working. You just don't eliminate a program. There's value to a program that has been in existence for years. So there's value to all these programs we have, but why are a few people falling through the cracks? And the thing is, we don't want to tell um, fathers not to pay their child support because then the mother and the child won't get you know service, services or benefits that they need. 
we want to be able to provide that safety network for everyone. As someone, I really want to thank you for taking the time on the show as well as your passion for the issues that you're involved in, whether it be the social services or the Homeland Security. You do a great job representing the 20th District, and uh, I thank you for taking the time to join us here this evening. Thank you, Mayor. For Assemblywoman Annette Quijano, I'm Chris Bolwage, and we'll see you next week on another edition of Our City.